greeting the world of colors early in the morning and listening to the singing of the chirping singing and chirping of the sparrows is something that we all adore but what if i could do neither will i be living yet not alive disabilities prove prove to be challenging in a life of a person but imagine if you had not one but two disabilities 95% of the knowledge that we get from our environment is through our eyes and ears but deaf and blind people have no other option but to rely on the senses of touch one such person who was very famous was helen keller she was the first deaf and deaf and blind person to earn a bachelor's degree but how is it possible for someone who can't hear or see to learn how is it possible that she could communicate with a normal individual if you see her videos you would find that she uses her fingers on the face of the person she wants to converse with let's learn the science behind it every language is made up of sounds every language can be broken down into small building blocks of sounds called phones these phones can be categorized in three categories first based on voicing if your vocal cord vibrates while pronouncing the sound it is a voiced phone and if it doesn't it is unvoiced example z is voiced and s is unvoiced the second characterization is the place of articulation articulation is the way you form the sound articulation is how sound comes out of your mouth and what parts of your face are involved for example bilabial is when both your lips are involved like b m p and dental is when your teeth is involved like l th the next type of ca characterization is the manner of articulation which uses how the air flows out of your body if there are sudden rush of air it means it's a stop like p d t and if there is continuous flow of air it is called a fricative like now using all of these characteristics you can actually classify each of these phones distinctly for example in the word bat the word b the phone b is a bilabial voiced stop this is what helen keller used she placed one of her fingers on the throat to identify voicing one on the lips to identify the place and manner of articulation and one on the nose to identify nasal sounds like m mm, n mm. this whole process was borrowed from helen keller and applied into speech recognition it gave a whole new perspective to the way we see speech signals and improved speech recognition this shows that communication is not just words because even your hands can communicate thank you you sounded great and you look great too thank you um uh, uh for speech therapy uh, we know the usual suspects right what we can use it for do we have any unusual uses for speech therapy as well speech recognition as such um speech recognition actually has found its uses in every field right from the medical field when you want to diagnose a patient all you all you have to do is just speak into a machine and that machine can administer the drugs that you want to the patient and even in rocket sciences you can actually use speech to control the whole motion of the rocket it has found its applications everywhere anything that you can do with any other sense in your body you can do it with speech and speech is one of the most uh, most common things that you find among men so it's not very difficult to talk it is very difficult to operate something but if you just say switch on and it switches on i think there's nothing that makes life easier uh it's a very interesting field of research and i believe you are doing research in that so let's take a child which is say 2 months 3 months old what can we say about the communication skill of such a baby uh, and what how would it communicate can we understand that language when it comes to communication at such a small age every individual from the minute or he or she is born starts to communicate either through his eyes through his actions through his feelings 
do not speak because they will learn a language only after a particular point of time they do have other forms of communication which people around them would understand example if they want to eat they cry although it's not a form of speech but it is some sound that they make it may not make sense but it is some signal that they raise by which they communicate to the mother that they're hungry or something thank you